Jim Martin, in his book, Come Forth, starts to talk about his first experience to Lazarus' tomb. I peered into the dimly lit tomb and tentatively started my climb down the stairs. When I imagined this pilgrimage, I expected that the tomb of Lazarus, the site of Jesus' greatest miracle, would be one of the most crowded sites. But I was alone. Even lit, the narrow stone stairwell was dim. As I descended, my footsteps echoed against the damp walls. In a few seconds, I was in a small chamber where there was barely enough room to stand. Perhaps, I thought, this was a tomb. But on one side of the room, cut into the wall, was a small opening near the ground, perhaps three feet wide by four feet high. This opening led to another chamber, the tomb. To enter, I had to get down on my hands and knees and crawl through the tight space. Standing up in the small, dark, grayish green stone tomb, I wondered what it was like for Lazarus to hear Jesus' voice. What must it have meant to decide to come out? Lazarus could have stayed behind. And who could blame him? How frightening it must have been to die after his illness, knowing he would leave behind two unmarried sisters, crushed that his good friend Jesus had not visited, and frightening to live again. Change of any kind can be frightening. I knelt down again in the tomb and prayed out loud. There's no need to be embarrassed. Who would hear me except God? I asked God to take away everything that kept me from becoming the person God wanted me to be. And I asked God for new life. My voice echoed in the dim stone chamber. And then I left the tomb.